Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you all the best features of the Oppo Reno 4 Pro. By the way, I've already made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I've talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the best features about this phone starts off with its display. This phone sports a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display with 90Hz refresh rate with a peak brightness of 1100 nits protected by a Corning Gorilla Glass 5. This is definitely one of the best displays out there. It's great for regular media consumption and specifically for gaming because of that 90Hz refresh rate. Next best thing about this phone is its performance. This phone sports a Snapdragon 720G processor with Adreno 618 GPU with 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage. These are the benchmark scores. Purely in terms of performance, it's not that powerful compared to the competition, but it's pretty powerful enough for a regular user and it can also perform pretty well and it also offers great experience while gaming. Next best thing and my favorite feature about this phone is its super fast charging speeds. This phone sports a 4000mAh battery and comes with a 65W SuperVOOC 2.0 power adapter. You can get up to 50% of charge in just 10 minutes and can completely charge your phone in less than 30 minutes. Charging speeds on this phone are just super fast. Next, this phone also comes with some pretty impressive cameras. On the rear, it has a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel primary camera with Sony IMX586 sensor. For selfies, it has a 32 megapixel camera with f2.4 aperture. These are some sample shots. Next, it also has a wide angle camera. It's an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. And these are some sample shots. Going on next, this phone also comes with a super fast in display fingerprint scanner. And it is super fast, like it almost instantaneously unlocks the phone. Here's a quick preview. Going on next, we also have the face unlock feature on this phone and even that is pretty fast. In good lighting conditions, it is super fast just like the in-display fingerprint scanner. It even works pretty well in low lighting conditions. In complete darkness, it still works, it is pretty fast but takes like a second or two to unlock the phone. Next we have ultra steady mode. This is a brand new feature from Oppo which super stabilizes the footage. Here's your regular footage recorded in normal mode and a comparison with the ultra steady mode. We also have something called ultra steady pro mode which is actually supposed to be better but the results as of now aren't that good. Maybe it can improve with an update. Here's the sample footage. Next we have a brand new feature called video bokeh effect. This is a feature just like portrait mode but for video recording. Using this feature, we can get a background blur effect while recording video. And we can also change the amount of background blur effect you want before you start recording the video. Here's the sample footage. Next we have Nightscape for both the front and red cameras. Yes, unlike most of the phones, this phone supports Nightscape mode for both the front and red cameras which is supposed to improve pictures in low lighting conditions. Next we also get a dedicated Ultra 48 MP mode. Now this phone has a 48 megapixel camera but by default you get 12 megapixel pictures. But for some reason if you want to take a 48 megapixel picture, you can do that in this mode. Next we have Dazzle Color. Now this is a very unique feature available only on this phone or Realme and Oppo phones. You can use it for the front and rear cameras and once you turn it on, everything will pop out, colors will look super saturated and images will look very pleasing. Next we have portrait mode for both the front and red cameras. Now this isn't a very big feature, it's been around for many years. So I won't talk about much. These are some sample shots. Next we have stickers. Using this feature we can add these stickers to your face using both the front and red cameras and take some unique pictures. It comes with a few stickers pre-installed and you can also download a lot more. Next we also have a dedicated face beauty mode. Now this brings in a lot of cool features 
like it can smoothen your skin, make your face thinner and even smaller and do all sorts of crazy stuff. Have a look at this. Next, this phone also supports slow motion video recording. This phone can record at 120fps at 1080p resolution, 240fps at 720p resolution and an insane 960fps at 720p resolution. Here's a quick sample. Next, this phone has electronic image stabilization for both the front and rear camera video recording. This applies only at 1080p and here's a quick sample. Next, this phone has support for recording video in 4K resolution. You can change the video resolution from the toggles at the top. Now here's a sample footage recorded in 4K resolution, downscaled to 1080p. For the rear camera, it has just one gesture, that's tap to take pictures. Just enable this feature and touch the preview window to take a picture. Now for the front camera, it also has the palm gesture and once you enable this feature, whenever your phone sees your palm, it takes a picture in 2 seconds. This feature is really handy for taking selfies. Next we have AI color portrait. You can find it from the filters and once you enable this feature, you can capture the subject in color while the background is in black and white. This feature works better with human subjects. It also has blue, green, red filters as they call them sky blue, forest green and crimson red where it shows only those colors and rest of the image is in black and white. And you can also record videos in this mode and this works at night as well. Next we have night flare portrait mode. It's basically a combination of night mode and portrait mode where you can capture better looking portrait shots even at night with great details. Next we have always on display. Now this is something you might have already heard or seen and you can enable this feature from the display settings. Once you enable this feature, you can see your clock face on the lock screen. With that said, here's a quick preview. By the way, we can also schedule it to automatically turn on and turn off at a specific time. Next we have dark mode. This is another famous feature and once you enable this feature, it'll change all the UI elements to the dark mode or the dark theme. Things like notification panel, home screen or even settings all change to the dark mode. Some of the system applications like the phone dialer, SMS application also change to the dark mode. Some Google applications like Play Store and YouTube also automatically change to the dark mode. Next we have Super Power Saver Mode. Once you enable this feature, your phone turns on dark mode, restricts performance, reduces battery usage and gives you few applications that you can use and also gives you the option to add few more apps. In this mode, phone's standby time increases drastically. By the way, we can still use internet in this mode. It does consume more battery, but it is definitely better than the regular mode. Going on next, we can also change the screen refresh rate of this phone. By default, there are three options, 90Hz, 60Hz and Auto Select. By default, it is set to Auto Select, where your phone automatically changes the screen refresh rate based on what you're doing. But personally, I'll set it to 90Hz to have a much more consistent experience. Next we have edge lighting for notifications. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a notification whenever your phone is locked, the edges of the phone simply glow with different animations. Next, this phone also has Dolby Atmos sound enhancement. Now this feature is only available for the headset and if you are using a headset, it can definitely improve your overall audio experience. We have a new navigation gesture called swipe from both sides. Now once you enable this feature, you can swipe from the bottom to go home, swipe and hold for recent tabs and finally swipe from the left side or right side to go back a step. Next we have the old style swipe up gestures. Now once you enable this feature, you can swipe from the bottom right or bottom left corner to go back a step. You can swipe from the center to go home and finally you can swipe and hold from the bottom center for recent tabs. Even these gestures work really well. Now going on next, we have a super handy shortcut to trigger Google Assistant with the power button. Once you enable this feature, you can long press the power button to trigger Google Assistant. It's a nice feature and can be quite useful while using your navigation gestures. But I don't think this power button will last longer if you use it continuously. 
Next, we have three finger screenshot. Now, before I show you that, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. On any Android phone, if you want to take a screenshot, press the volume down button and power button both at the same time and your phone will take a screenshot. It is as simple as that. Now, for some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you or if you need something more easy, you can enable this three finger screenshot gesture. Now, once you enable this feature, you can simply swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Personally, this is my favorite feature or my favorite way to take a screenshot and nowadays most of the phones support this feature. Now going on next, we have long screenshot. Now to take a longer screenshot, first you need to take a normal screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. Now once you take a screenshot, you get this preview. Now click long screenshot. Now just scroll the page up as long as you want to take a longer screenshot. Now going on next, this phone even comes with screen recording. I really don't know why you want to record your screen, especially on an Android phone. But for some reason, if you want to record it, you can start it from the notification toggles or you can also use the smart bar, which can be accessed from anywhere by swiping on the right side corner. You can stop recording by clicking the stop button on the floating bubble. Next, we have flash on call. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call, flashlight on the phone blinks to give you an indication. This feature can be quite useful when your phone is in silent mode. Next, we have a feature called vibrate when you answer an end call. Just like the name suggests, every time you answer a call or end a call, your phone vibrates. It's not a big feature, but adds to the overall experience. Next, we have a feature that identifies unknown numbers. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call from any unknown number, your phone will check its online database and try to find the contact name. This can be quite useful to check spam calls. Next, we have a feature called screen on end calls with power button. Once you enable this feature, you can end calls by pressing the power button when the display is on. When the display is off, clicking the power button just turns on the display. Next we have split screen mode. Now split screen mode has been on Android for a very long time, but on this phone, we have some more features. Now to start a split screen mode, as always, you can simply press and hold the recent apps button. Or on this phone, you can also use the three finger gesture, simply swipe up using three fingers to open the current application in a split screen mode. You can choose a secondary application from the list below. Personally, I like this gesture and I wish every other phone has it. Next, we have some screen off gestures like double tap to wake. Just enable it and double tap the screen to wake it up. Next, you can draw a note to open the camera application. We can also draw a V to toggle the torch. We can also draw characters like greater than or less than for music controls. And finally, you can add custom gestures like you can draw a W to open WhatsApp, M for phone dialer, and so on. Next, we have raise to wake. Now, once you enable this feature, you can simply raise your phone or pick it up from a table and your phone wakes up and then displays the lock screen. Next, we have flip to mute incoming calls. Now, just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can flip your phone to silence an incoming call. Next, we have one-handed mode. You can enable this feature from the toggles and once you click on it, screen size will shrink and your phone becomes much more usable one-handed. Once you're done, you can click the button on the top corner to go full screen. Next, we have grayscale mode. Once again, you can access this feature from the toggles and once you enable it, display goes completely black and white. You can use it as a prank or just use it while reading a book on your phone. Next, we have digital well-being. Now, this is a feature from Google that tracks all your usage on your phone and gives you a complete analysis of which apps you're using more and then helps you limit your usage and block notifications from those applications. Next, we have wind down. This feature is part of digital well-being, which can help you sleep faster at night. Using this feature, you can schedule your phone to turn on grayscale mode and do not disturb mode automatically at a specific time. Next, we have a feature called low brightness flicker free eye care. Now this feature is available in very few phones that will help you protect your eyes in low lighting conditions. Next we have OC visual effect. This feature slightly improves the picture quality of the display by making content from apps like TikTok, VMate and more look more pleasing. It does work but right now only few applications support it and it does drain your battery. Now going on next, this phone has a very unique feature called smart sidebar. It is enabled by default and this is how it looks like. You have some quick shortcuts, quick actions and some quick applications. You can access it from anywhere. 
even while watching videos or playing games in full screen mode, you can swipe near the notch area to bring it up. From here, you can quickly launch applications, take a screenshot, record the screen, block banner notifications, and finally open few applications in a floating window. Next, we have Assistive Ball. Now, just in case if navigation gestures are not really your thing, but you still want a much more immersive experience, you can enable Assistive Ball. Once you enable this feature, you'll see a floating bubble that can do multiple actions. Now, first, you need to select the operation mode. You have gestures and tap mode. I'll go with gestures. Now you can tap once to go back, double tap for multitasking, and touch and hold to go home. If you select tap, once you click it, you just get additional options, just like the iPhones and iPads. Now this is another way to interact with your phone, and gives you a much more immersive experience. Next we have Night Shield. Now once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and thereby filters the blue light. According to a research, blue light emitted by art displays affects sleep at night. So to prevent that, we have this Night Shield mode and you can enable it manually or schedule it to automatically turn on or turn off at a specific time. Next we have Startup Manager. Now just like the name suggests, it's a feature that allows you to stop applications from auto starting in the background. Now most of these applications automatically start in the background and then drain your battery life. And for the most part, just applications like maybe Instagram or WhatsApp needs to be allowed to auto start. So you can disable auto start permission for all these applications and further improve the battery life. Next, we have an app lock built into the system. And unlike most phones, we can unlock locked applications either by using the password or the fingerprint scanner and even by using the face unlock feature. So if you're already using face unlock feature on your phone, most of the time, you won't even see the lock screen. Now, because of this one particular feature, you can lock any application you want and you won't be inconvenienced in any way. Next, we have clone apps, which is a feature that allows you to use two instances of the same application. Like you can have two WhatsApp accounts, two Facebook accounts, and two Instagram accounts on the same phone. This is definitely a very handy feature, but it is still limited to only very few applications. Let's say if I want to use two Paytm accounts on the same phone, we can't do that. Next we have Game Space. Now this feature or application just tries to improve your gaming experience and gives you a lot more cool features. Now once you add all your games to this game space and then open that game, your phone will divert all the resources to improve your gaming experience. It means faster game load speeds, better visuals, and more than that, it gives you the option for do not disturb mode, where you won't be interrupted with annoying notification sounds or visual disturbances like banner notifications. You also have different power profiles to improve the performance or battery life. It also gives you the option to disable auto brightness, which is missing on many phones out there. Next we have Wi-Fi tethering. Now this is a very unique feature which allows you to share existing Wi-Fi connection to other devices. It's like your regular hotspot, but instead of using your mobile data, it will use your existing Wi-Fi connection. Now you might think this might not be a useful feature, but let's say if you're in an airport or a hotel where you have access to only one device over a Wi-Fi, then in that situation, you can share the existing single Wi-Fi connection to multiple devices. Next we have Private Save. Now this feature is more like an application or like a vault where you can hide all kinds of files. Just like the app lock, we can have a completely different password from your lock screen and we can unlock it using your fingerprint or your facial data. Personally, I suggest you to use Gallery Vault. Next we have Automatic On Off. Now this is another weird name for Schedule Power On and Power Off and using these settings, we can automatically turn on and turn off your phone at a specific time. Next we have Smart Energy Saver. Now this is another feature to improve your battery life. If you enable it, your phone will automatically manage all the apps running in the background to improve the battery life. If you disable it, you get the complete list of applications that are installed on your phone and you can manually choose to block an application from running in the background. Next we have Kid Space. If your kid is troubling you about your phone, he wants to play some games or maybe sometimes he accidentally purchases stuff, Kid Space can be quite useful for you. Once you configure this kid space, your kid will be able to only use specific applications that you choose and he will be able to use your phone only for a specific amount of time. Once again, it's a nice feature, but if your kid already knows your password, it's completely useless. So guys, those were all the best features. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and make sure you check out my video on tips and tricks section, link will be in the description. Now if you are planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. 
I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.